Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we're going to conclude the May June 2019 Agricultural Science for CISEC Paper 2. We're going to conclude it with question number six. We would have looked at question number one, two, three, four, and five before, and so we're looking at question six today. But before we jump into question six, you know what to do like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and of course, in the description, you can purchase the agriculture pack that contains past papers and textbooks and things like that. All right, so let's just jump into question number six. Farmer Telly wants to increase the size of his dairy herd, but finds it very costly to rear bulls. He is advised by the extension officer to make use of artificial insemination or AI services provided by the Ministry of Agriculture in his area. A, state two reasons why Farmer Telly is encouraged to use artificial insemination as a method of breeding in his dairy enterprise. So what are some advantages of using AI? Now the textbook has it outlined here, right? So you have it right here. There is, an, there is an improvement or upgrading for the farmer's stock of animals. So if you use AI or artificial insemination, you are able to properly choose the stock, the breed and things like that to upgrade your, 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 your flock, your stock, your herd. You, you, you have a, a better choice uh, you can choose the upgrade path of your herd because by using artificial insemination instead of letting, letting the, the, the cow go wild and get jumped by any any bull you can now control uh, the upgrade path and use proper semen sp sp samples to upgrade the animal to a higher quality that's one right there it removes the risk involved in rearing dangerous male animals for example bulls and so right there, you see the problem up there, can't find a bull, quite costly. And so right there, using AI eliminates the use, the, the reason for rearing the bull. You do not have to rear any bulls. That's an advantage right there, right? Do not have to keep any bulls around, because they cost money to feed. They might be too wild. They might go and jump the animals when you're not ready. So by using AI, artificial insemination, you don't, you don't need a bull on your farm. You don't have to store a bull. So it will save you all that risk, all that cost. And then they say right here, the cost to the farmer are less than the cost of rearing a male animal to maturity. So in terms of rearing the animal to maturity, as I said before, so you don't need the bull, you do not need the bull. And also, if you do have a bull, it's going to cost less than rearing the bull, right? So artificial insemination reduce that cost of rearing the bull. Then, of course, they said say the female do not need to be taken to a breeding station for servicing. The spread of venereal diseases is reduced or prevented. So, hear what they're saying here now. Because you're using AI from your Ministry of Agriculture, they tend to screen the animals, screen the semen sample to, so that they don't, they don't diseases exist in that sample. Whereas, if you have a wild animal, you don't know where it came from, you don't know what disease it might have pick, picked up, and so you might put your herd at risk with some disease. But when you use AI, the semen might be screened, and you know that the disease might be absent from that sample. Young females, such as heifers, are not at risk of physical injury, which can occur during mating because of the weight of a mature bull. Semen from a pedigree male can be used to service hundreds of females, we said that before. Semen from injured males or injured males or males that cannot mount females can be used. Frozen semen can be stored and used for many years, even after the death of the male. So all those are advantages or reasons going to encourage Telly to go and use artificial insemination. But of course, there are some downsides to it. So one problem Farmer Telly might encounter in using artificial insemination in his dairy enterprise would be, of course, is expensive. The cost of setting up and maintaining the necessary facilities can be expensive. So it can be very expensive. Plus, you need special equipment and skilled personnel, including trained inseminators who are required to carry out the task. Because it is a very skilled process, and maybe Farmer Telly doesn't know how to do it, and so you have to depend on somebody now. They might cost money to, to hire that person, you might have to still go and get the skill yourself, but it might cost you money, things like that. Semen storage and inspection facilities need to be maintained. The frozen semen has to be monitored regularly to detect loss of viability of the sperm. So all the extra work now you have to go and do. You have to be have a place to store the semen, and if you have a place to store the semen, you don't have to maintain and monitor and you know, keep an eye out on the semen 
all the extra work you need all the extra facilities to be put in place and so that might be difficult then there is a possibility for failure with insemination farmers may not respond quickly enough to the sign of ostrus in the female cows may not may not come on heat or they might be silently in heat and you can't detect it and so you might go and use it at the wrong time and waste all the semen and it doesn't conceive one disadvantage of widespread use of AI in a dairy cattle is that the concentration soil and desirable characteristics can result in the loss of genetic variation. So they're saying that if everybody focuses on the same cattle, let's say everybody want to, you know, rear Holstein, then what can happen to the Jersey and the rest animals? You know, everything they might fall off to the wayside because everybody want one genetic makeup in the Holstein. And so that might be a problem. The technique of diluting and freezing semen means that fewer bulls need to be kept and there is a danger of inbreeding depression. What they're saying is that if you use the same bull over and over and over again, you might eventually have a case where the brother, sister, mother, grandmother, all of them were bred from the same bull and so the overall yield of the animal would reduce over time because they're using the same and same genetic stock. And so that's, that can be a problem. All right, so all those are disadvantages of using artificial insemination. Good. One mark for all, just to choose one, one mark. B, after using the artificial insemination service provided by the Ministry of Agriculture, farmer tell observed that none of his animals, none of his cows conceived. So there's three reasons, possible reasons why none of the cows conceived. Okay, one, they might not have been in heat. That's what I, they said it right here in the book. Right? They say there's a possibility of failure of insemination. Farmers may not respond quickly enough to the sign of ostrus in the female. That's one reason. So one reason he might have been too late to um inseminate the animal. So the, 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 the heat period gone. Might have been too late. Right? And two, the cause may have come and heat silently and he did not detect it. So he didn't just didn't even know that they were in heat. So those are two reasons why he might not be inseminated also the other reasons the age of the animal the animal might have been a little old the cow might have been a little old and so he might have a problem you know getting inseminated properly so the age as well also the health of the animal the animals might not be in the best health and so therefore if they're not in the best health then there might be a chance that they do not conceive after artificial insemination they might not be in good health that's the next one. The next one, the quality of the semen. The quality of the semen might not, 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 might not be up to standard, might not be up, up to scratch. It might be a poor quality. Or it wasn't stored properly, so when time comes to use it, it's not viable. So, uh, so then there's no, conceive, there's no conceiving going on because one, the quality is poor, or two, it's no longer viable because it was stored uh, improperly. So all those are reasons why there might not be any and any, any other cows conceiving all right good so choose any one only one they're asking for right uh oh they asked for three and i gave you more than three so you can choose those and you can go to town and explain what might cause them to not conceive all right just another one to to continue was the process done properly remember artificial insemination takes some skills no, you might say you did it properly, but you didn't. And so there's no conceiving because it was not done properly. And so that's a problem right there. And one last one, were the cows, were they actually in heat though? Were they actually in heat? Were they ready to ovulate? Did they actually release the egg? You don't know, right? Because something we don't know, as I said, and, and said about before, it might be silent, but you might not know. So did they ovulate? If they did not ovulate, then there would be no there will be no conceiving of any cows anywhere. All right, so you have a whole lot to choose from. Choose any tree suggestion, and you get your tree max. Good. All right, next one. Farmer Zoe placed a batch of eggs in an incubator to hatch. After 21 days, she noticed that none of the eggs hatched. So just two possible reasons why the eggs did not hatch. Okay, why didn't the eggs hatch? Okay, let's go. The equipment itself. You might have had faulty equipment. The incubator might have been faulty. For example, the light source. Maybe there was not the proper warmth needed for the... Maybe the light, the light didn't provide enough warmth for the animal, for the eggs to hatch. That's one. 
two, maybe there was not enough ventilation in the area. It was too hot, too humid. The temperature, the atmosphere just wasn't right for the eggs to hatch. Uh, three, the eggs might not, might not have been viable. The eggs might not have been viable, might have been, you know, maybe not mature. They might have been, where should I say, spoiled maybe. The eggs might not have been viable, and so they did not hatch. Those are three reasons why there might not be any hatching. And of course, if you jump in there in your textbook, you will see certain conditions that are essential for incub artificial incubation. And so we looked at the heat supply. We said the temperature might not have been the best to facilitate the hatching. Then we said that the egg might not have been viable, meaning the egg might not have been fertile. And so if the egg is not fertile, it's not going to hatch. It also said the humidity might have been, you know, not the best humidity there. It might have been too warm, too hot, too whatever. But the conditions were not necessary, were not good enough for the egg to hatch. Ventilation, there might not have been enough oxygen be, and uh, carbon dioxide being circulating. It's because we, remember we said that the eggs are basically alive and they actually do exchange gases still because they are porous. And so they exchange gases. They have the gas, the, the ear pocket to the bottom of the egg there. And so they exchange gases still. But if there's no way for the egg to exchange gases, then it would basically choke off the egg and the egg would die. And so there'll be no hatching. And then of course, turning the egg, this prevents the yolk from sticking on the shell and may be done manually in small box type incubators. Mechanical turning is achieved by automatically devices which tilt the trees constantly. So maybe they did not turn the egg during the course of the incubation period and so there was no hatching going on. So all these are reasons why the incubation might have been unsuccessful. Then we go down to the last question of this paper, the last question of the May June 2019 Agricultural Science is a paper two. Use of, you, upon closer examination of the eggs, the shells were observed to be thin and cracked. Explain one reason for this observation. All right, so yeah, multiple reasons why the eggs might be thin and cracked. One, of course, the old bird. The hen might have been a little old, and as the animals get old, the hen gets older and older, the layers get older the strength and the viability of the eggs tend to weaken and so maybe the eggs were from an older bird that's one reason two the nut nut nutrition perhaps the birds were not being fed properly for example they might have lacked calcium in the ration and so if you don't have the calcium needed then the egg would not form the shell would not form properly it would be weak and brittle and so you'll have some cracking and they would be thin so those are two main reasons why there might be cracks and it might be thin. The age of the bird might be too old, and also the nutrition that the bird received. And just two more for the road. Also, heat. Remember we mentioned heat above? Maybe there was heat stress associated with the incubation process. And so because of heat stress, you would find that the shells would crack. And of course, also handling. You might have handled the egg a little poorly, but I mean, that would more account for the cracking than the thinning, but even handling the eggs might cause them to crack. So again, that's it for this paper, the May, June 2019, Agricultural Science, paper two for CSEC. That's it for this paper. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, so you know when Learn SKN drops another video for Agricultural Science. All right, thanks for watching, thanks for listening.